most likely, we believe. Returning to the Arctic region, I want to point your attention to that area, a submerged shelf off of Siberia that is approximately 70 meters, about 200 feet below water. During ice ages past, it was above water, and there was abundant life there at times. And now that life is decomposed under the sediments of that East Siberian Arctic shelf and has turned into something else. Here's another view, a map view, of the East Siberian Arctic shelf. And as you'll read the caption, it says that that shallow ledge of submerged sea shelf is estimated to contain between 500 and 5,000 gigatons, billion tons of methane, a huge amount. To give you a sense of the magnitude, there are approximately five gigatons of methane in the atmosphere of Earth today. And we are talking about from hundreds to thousands of times that amount contained in that one shallow ledge. What you're seeing on this slide is the release of methane from one of several hundred plumes that were discovered when explorations went up there in 2007. And the notation that methane is approximately 86 times as powerful a greenhouse gas as CO2. Now you will see variation in that number for the following reason. When the methane is emitted, it's estimated to be above 150 times as powerful a greenhouse gas as CO2. Over 150 times as powerful. However, the methane begins to decay when it's exposed to air and it becomes H2O and CO2. So it decays to a less impactful form of a greenhouse gas, carbon dioxide, but it does so slowly. So the 86 number is the, the number I've seen over a 20-year period. That number is represented as approximately 23 over a 100-year period. That is, during the first year, it's extremely dangerous, and it becomes less dangerous over time. Now, watch the methane. We're not getting sound from this slide, unfortunately. Thank you. Those were students in Alaska whose teacher had brought them out on a frozen lake because it happens in lakes as well. The sediments of the lake, which contain organic material, the organic material, when it's digested in, in an anaerobic environment, becomes methane instead of CO2. And so kids have found that it's fun to go and poke holes in the ice and light that on fire. It's kind of Arctic fireworks. But it represents something very, very serious to those of us who understand what it means, because it is such a potent greenhouse gas. So for the last two or three years, the, there's been a, an, a, a joint Russian-Alaskan expedition going out into the Siberian Sea and observing this, and they've been seeing great plumes of methane uh, bubbling up all over the East Siberian Sea. The whole uh, zone of millions of square miles of territory uh, is now releasing all of its, its methane cover. Millions of square miles is now releasing all of its methane cover. That's Dr. Peter Wadhams, and we'll return to Dr. Wadhams in a, a few slides from now. Dr. Natalia Shakova leads a team of scientists, joint American-Russian scientific team, studying conditions on the East Siberian Arctic Shelf. Here are her words. So the, the methane in the atmosphere the amount, the total amount of methane in the atmosphere, in the current atmosphere. It's about five gigatons. The amount of carbon um, preserved um, in form of methane in this Southern Arctic shelf is approximately from hundreds to thousands of gigatons. And of course, it's only 1% of that uh, amount is required to double the atmospheric burden of methane. But the, to destabilize 1% of this carbon pool, I think it's not much effort needed, considering that the state of permafrost and the amount of methane currently involved. And one more remark from Dr. Shakova. 
Shortly speaking, we do not like what we see there. Absolutely do not like. Now, Dr. Shakova and her team estimate the volume of methane currently being released at approximately 50 gigatons. That is 50 billion tons of methane. It's a pure estimate. There is no way of knowing. It could be vastly more. The question of how quickly, we don't know. Now, that 50 gigatons would represent 10 times the methane content of Earth's atmosphere today and would more than double the Earth's burden of greenhouse gases, including CO2. That is, we would go from a 400 parts per million CO2 world to the equivalent of 800 to 1,000 parts per million. Now, we, at the moment, we have to rely on Shakov and Semiletov, uh, who've been doing that work, uh, and they have then expert knowledge of the seabed conditions, and they're the ones who are estimating the 50 gigatons. Um, so that, that could be revised up or down uh, if further work is done in that area. And do you think civilization could survive a 50 gigaton release of methane? Um, no, I don't think it can. Um, I think that the, if you look at the, the, the existing predictions of, of global warming rates, um, what's, what's kind of eerie is the fact that uh, the business as usual projections, even, even the cautious ones produced by IPCC, are still giving us about four degrees of warming by the end of the century and uh, with two degrees has been taken arbitrarily as the level beyond which nasty things happen. I, I don't know why it's two degrees but, but that will be reached by the middle of the century and four degrees by the end of the century. Now f four degrees, people who've calculated what that would do to food production, uh, to uh, die off of forests, to acceleration of warming due to various extra feedbacks that kick in that the general conclusion is pretty dire that that if if you if you get to four degrees of warming then collapse of civilization is is what's going to happen because the world won't be able to sustain anywhere near its present population so the result will be chaos and, and warfare um, so that's that's just that the eerie thing is that that's predicted by the IPCC uh, report but the, the projection of warming by the end of the century is four degrees but nowhere do they state at all that four degrees is a catastrophe for uh, economically and so socially for the, for the planet um, and now with this Arctic methane you're simply adding another uh, another element to the warming even if it's only an extra 0.6 that brings forward the date at which catastrophic warming is achieved by maybe another maybe 20 years. This is from one of the world's foremost authorities on the Arctic sea ice, Dr. Wadhams from Cambridge University. Now, here you see two polar views of our planet. On the left, the methane detected in November of 2008 and on the right, November 2012. This is the millions of square miles of territory now releasing its methane cover. And I'll call your attention to the scientists who con collaborated on this report, an American, a Russian, and a Chinese scientist, and in particular to Dr. Ira Leifer, and I have a quote from Dr. Ira Leifer for you next in three parts. Some scientists are indicating we should make plans to adapt to a four degree centigrade hotter world. While prudent, one wonders what portion of the population could adapt to such a world. My view is that it's just a few thousand people seeking refuge in the Arctic or Antarctica. Very grave consequences we face from our actions. Here is what's known as a methane veil that's spreading southward from the Arctic. The red at the top, well, first the yellow background, excuse me, is 1750 to 1850 parts per billion. The orange, which is spreading from the 
the methane release in the, in the Arctic is 1850 to 1950, and the red is above 1950, with a peak having been recorded in January of this year at almost 2,400 parts per billion. To give you some frame of reference for what that compares to, pre-industrial methane levels are estimated to have been about 720 parts per billion. So we've already gone two and a half times the pre-industrial level. And again, methane is 150 times as powerful a greenhouse gas when it's first emitted. Now let's look at the consequences of that. What you're seeing here is a map of the world. This was compiled by the University Corporation for Atmospheric Research in 2012. And it details the drought conditions in the first decade of this century. The next three slides will go to the one-third point, the two-thirds point, and the final decade of this century. Keep your eyes on the colors red. 2030 through 39, 2060 through 69, and 2090 through 99. And it goes from red off the scale through purple and violet and to finally white. In the vernacular, the Mediterranean is toast. The heartland of the United States is toast. The ability of the world to provide food will be concentrated in just a few areas, mostly in northern China, Russia, Canada, and Alaska. That will be for feeding a population of seven to nine billion people, perhaps.